I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, Velocities in Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. I'm wearing some interesting colors today, Tom. I, oh, like, yeah. to, I like to promote my Green Bay Packers oh, on this that? channel. Okay. I yeah. like to do that. But there's a reason for it today. The band we're reviewing originated from Wisconsin. The well, Holy there you Land. go. Even oh. though we're from Iowa, yeah. the, the Midwest, I mean, Iowa, all we have is corn here, right? N now this actually makes sense for once. Yeah, it actually Wonderful. makes sense yeah, for one, right. one time. Right. Yeah. I'm going to promote this, and it's going to make sense. Yep. So anyways, right. the band we're reviewing today mm -hmm. is a band that actually kind of flew under the radar somehow because the front man of Volcano Choir, the mm -hmm. band we're reviewing, is Justin Vernon from Bon Iver. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, Justin Vernon! <laughs> and he heartthrobs everywhere, unite! It's Volcano Choir, <laughs> the new album, Repave. Volcano Choir, Justin Vernon. Justin Vernon is a tour de force in the indie scene right now. Mm -hmm. He has had two albums come out uh, for Emma Forever ago, and then a couple years ago, mm -hmm. um, his self-titled second album yeah. came out, Bon, bon Iver. And, and, I mean, universal acclaim doesn't even begin to describe D Justin mm -hmm. Vernon's take on the yeah. music scene. I mean, he has just, <coughs> it's such a, a powerful voice. He's able, it's just so unique, yeah. and he's able to pack in these, like, wonderful parts. I mean, nobody can do what he can do mm -hmm. vocally, but it's not just that. I mean, his song arrangements are interesting. His his chord progressions are, are cathartic and, mm -hmm. like, just get you, and he's just so creative about how he makes his songs. Yeah. I mean, uh, and two starkly different albums, in my opinion, between his two solo albums. Oh, for, yeah, for sure. So now, with a full band sound, you know, he, he Bon Iver, Justin Vernon, and he teamed up with a band called Collections of Colonies of Bees, who I'm honestly not that familiar with. Nope. I've, I've never listened to them before. But this definitely has a, a more of a band and a full band sound. It does. Tom, what was your take on, on Repave? How does the sound measure against Bon Iver's solo albums you've heard? Well, there's there's definitely some some comparison there. You're right. This is a more full band uh, uh, iteration of, mm -hmm. of that sound. Uh, however, we actually heard a lot more complex arrangements on Bon Iver's self-titled totally albums. And this is even a little bit simpler than that as far as what, what instruments they're using because right. here it sticks pretty closely to... Uh, guitar, uh, you know, drums, vocals, mm -hmm. kind of, kind of a standard indie rock setup. Right. Um, but it's all about the way they're using those instrumentals and the rhythms they use. I mean, it, it reminds me at times of those bands that are so focused rhythmically, like Dodos, and even. Um, that's a good uh, point. Oh, oh my God! I can't think of Dirty Projectors. There you go. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. Didn't screw that one up. Um, which it's really all about how these kind of interesting, quirky guitar lines work with drums that are kind of start and stop, not yeah, just a, a steady bit rhythm. Yeah, They're not. They're not yeah. quite that steady. You know, but it's four four drum beat. Yeah, but it's still like somewhat low energy. Mm -hmm. You know, even yeah. though things are moving at kind of odd meters and things, it's it's not like it's math rock no. or something like that. It's just very, it's still very calming, but there's just a little bit more for your mind to pick at. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, this absolutely, it's so hard not to compare this to Bony Bear's <laughs> yeah. albums. I'm just, I'm just going to just say screw it and fully embrace it. This, this album, to me, walks this very fine line between For Emma Forever Ago and Bon Iver self-titled. Uh -huh. And, and, and it, it, just in its intimacy and how the songs are written and how Justin Vernon approaches his vocals, it's much more like For Emma Forever Ago, whereas the songs and arrangements and the overall production aspect of the sound is much more like Bon Iver self-titled. That's a very good point. So, yeah. so you, you kind of have the best of both, both worlds, in a sense, but I just want to come out and say, nowhere near the mastery. Nowhere near no. the sense of perfectionism. Nowhere near that cathartic release that you have mm -hmm. on either of those two albums. But where you, what you do have here that's a little bit different is, to me, just in the tra track lengths and how they develop. Yes, a lot this longer, is only, a lot more expansive. Exactly, and yeah. and they they develop over you know into different places. Right. I mean, which forever forever ago was a lot of kind of shorter tracks, and yeah. it, it, what, there weren't even very many songs Concise on it. Really, ideas. yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, very direct. Right. Uh, you know where you said Bon Iver is a little bit more sprawling, but it's not like it really gets that huge and, and sprawling in, in the individual track. Right. It's more like about the across the form, album. Right. Yeah. Whereas here, it, it's really, it, the songs go different places. Track 2, Acetate, um, really kind of builds in the end, and it's it's on a kind of a simple idea at first as the foundation and really builds. Uh, I saw that you weren't a huge fan of that track. Uh, I actually liked it pretty well, but it wasn't necessarily a highlight for me. But then you still have the tracks that break it down a little bit more, like track 5, Alaskans. And once again, that song's just about <clears throat> five minutes. Yeah. But it's really, it's you know, it's set up and presented somewhat simply. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a very complex idea, but they take the time to develop it and try to establish that emotional base. Right. And that's 
that's something that Justin Vernon's vocals, uh, you know, that's that's where the weight is carried, is it the emotion in his voice when he hits those falsettos. Mm -hmm. um, you also hear, though, a little bit of the, uh, the the production style that would be on, like, the Blood Bank EP with the, mm -hmm. you know, some of the uh, vocal uh, modulators and auto-tune and yeah. the effects there. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's interesting that in this age where everyone hates auto-tune, you've got this guy who's an indie rock or, or a kind of indie folk guy at least likely candidate to just throw auto tune in some tracks, Absolutely. but, but he makes it work, and I like it because I think it works with the songs. It's not overdone. Yeah, I mean these songs kind of have this subtle electronic glitchy yeah. feel to them, even yeah, though a have, lot of the instruments are authentic like guitars yeah, and drums and there's some subtle synth textures kind of going on in the background, uh, kind of enhancing the atmosphere and the mood. And I think that the that the auto tune and vocal manipulation goes along with that. I like that the guys just flipping the the middle finger to anyone who's says screw auto tune, you right. know, because he finds a way to make it artistic. Yeah. And I'm I'm all about that. Yeah, so, and a true artist finds uh -huh. ways to make anything an instrument. True, true. Uh, for me the big thing about this album, I think that, that sound wise it's good. Songwriting wise it's it's you know the the highlights are good but but not even like mind blowing. Uh, but the big thing to me was just a little bit of track displacement. Mm -hmm. Um particularly like tracks six <clears throat> and seven. I love Alaskans, the song that comes before it. I love Almanac as an album closer. Oh man, that but is those, my favorite song on the album. Yeah, me too. Uh, but those two that come before it, I just feel like are, are a little bit of a lull leading yeah, into and this I big actually, climax. And, and I know you like track two, but I actually felt like, I would, just to take that even a step further, tracks uh -huh. one and two, the album starts off slow. It's yeah. not till track three, Conrad, that I actually feel like this album has um, a real sense of brilliance to it. Yeah. Or any uh, they show any sign of brilliance. Mm -hmm. And then track uh, four, Bygone, and track five, Alaskans. It's not a horribly long album no. um, and the thing is is that there is that sense of track displacement mm -hmm. so only about half the tracks really you know get my fancy going yeah you know? so there's I, only eight tracks yeah it, it, it just yeah. kind of makes the listen a little bit disjointed and, and the thing mm -hmm. is is you're right none of these songs ever had that sen that sense of mastery that cathartic release that mm -hmm. any of Bon Iver's solo work does um, it is cool to see the more experimental side of things. Yes. These songs experiment. They go, they they play with ideas, they try new things, and that's something I definitely appreciate. If anything, Volcano Choir is is more of the testing ground, the, test, the testing and automation center for Bon Iver's solo work that he yeah. does these polished, perfect albums, and he comes here to get all this like crazy experimental and all these ideas worked out. Mm -hmm. This is a Jag Jaguar, or how do, however you say Jag that. Jag Jaguar? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. the record. I can't say it. I'm <laughs> terrible. But like they do a lot of this, a lot of these yeah. kind of cluttered, messy sort of albums that experiment all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sunset Rubdown comes to mind yep. in uh, Spencer Krug's um, sort of discography that he has going. I mean, it's the same sort of deal where you have just kind of experimental, lots of ideas, mm -hmm. and, and really some cool sounds. If you're a fan of Bon Iver, or if you like just more experimental indie rock in general, Volcano Choir's Repave is a very good album to pick up and listen to. Tom, yeah. what are you going to give this? I'm on 78. I'm right there with you, buddy. Right. I think 78. And i got to say, I definitely came up on this one. Yeah, me too. Um, with each listen, I just like it a little bit more. So it's possible I could come back to it throughout mm -hmm. the rest of 2013, like it more and more, and even go higher. But for mm -hmm. right now, 78. That's a mark of a really good album. Solid, even though it's in the 70s. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad album. Mm -hmm. It just means that it's solid. It's not something that's mind-blowing, but it's good. You guys should listen to Repave and give us your thoughts and feedback. Well, how did you experience this album? Was Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or was it just man to you? We'd love to hear. Please leave us a comment at www.velocitiesofmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesofmusic. As always, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, let us know what albums you'd like to see us review on this channel. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward.